Hi everyone, it's Ren here. I hope you're doing well. And I am welcoming you in yet another <laughs> environment. I thought that maybe the environment here was looking a bit more colorful than the previous one, so I decided to shift. So this video I wanted to make on the question of INFJ and Enneagram. I'm sure you guys have not, you know, have not forgotten about the existence of Enneagram and that most of you uh, have probably taken the test. Um, but I wanted to make this video about specifically Enneagram because I think that studying the Enneagram personality typology can be very useful to understanding your INFJ nest better. As you know, the Enneagram is divided into nine broad types from one to nine, each with their specific characteristics and each with a wing. In fact, there is also what we know as the trait type, uh, which I probably will not be going into in detail in this video. So the Enneagram, you know, proposes a typology of personality following a very different model than the MBTI model. However, it does, it does, I think, in my opinion, complete the MBTI model in such a way that if you know your MBTI type plus your Enneagram, you actually get an even sort of keener insight into, into your personality trait, but also by extension into the personality traits of other people. For example, uh, other people of your type. And this is often where the Enneagram in, co in combination with Myers-Briggs can be the most interesting because, you know, say like if we just take the INFJ example, for instance, well, the INFJ example is quite a striking one because we are supposed to be the rarest type. And so I think that we tend to be perceived as this kind of unified, cohesive block of type. Um, but probably in the very same way that we tend, you know, if, for example, I think about INTPs, I'm not going to necessarily think in terms of different types of INTPs because I don't have enough of, like, in-depth knowledge about it. Um, in the same way, I would not have different types for ENFPs, etc., etc. And it's the same with INFJs. In fact, there are so many different kinds of INFJ, I think. Uh, and and when you're INFJ and you have spent some time on, you know, say like on an online community, whether YouTube or an online forum, you very quickly notice that although there are similar characteristics between an INFJ and another INFJ, you know, there's going to be a certain NI connection there. There's going to be an FE connection as well. There's probably going to be a TI connection because the TI and the FE tend to come together. But there's also going to be lots of differences and I, you know, no matter how many models you try to combine to to get closer to the essence of a person, you're never going to manage to perfectly unify that personality in such a way as to make it identical to another one because personalities, are, each individuality is unique in many ways and a model can only capture so much. But um, still, an INFJ is very likely to be quite different than another INFJ, and I have found that Enneagram, when you know about Enneagram, really helps to identify what kind of INFJ a particular INFJ is. And that's what's really cool about the Enneagram, if you like, is the fact that it allows you not only to know that you're INFJ, that's what MBTI does, but it allows you to go a little bit further into your INFJ-ness. And specifically, I think that there can be six different uh, types that, that INFJs can be in Enneagram. So imagine that's at least six different kinds of INFJ, and that's not even talking about the wings specifically. So uh, because, as you know, you can have either of two wings. If you're type one, you can be type one with a nine wing or nine with a, uh, one with a two wing. If you're type two, you can be a type two with a one wing or a three wing if you're type four, etc., etc., uh, which means that you're a type, say, like two, leaning towards one or leaning towards three or strong two or weak two, you know, and that adds even more 
variety to the type that you have, knowing that you're already INFJ. So imagine the amount of diversity that you can attain in that way and and the amount of additional clarity. You know, I think INFJs love to just clarify things. They have a field in front of them. Their eye perceives certain features, certain patterns in the field. They want to have a big light that, like, allows them to see the field for what it is, notice all the little details of the pattern. And I think Enneagram can be used to um, to clarify those patterns within the INFJ type itself. So it's quite precise. Mm. And I think, like I said, I think there are six types that INFJs tend to identify with for Enneagram. Um, and therefore, three, that doesn't really happen. It happens rarely that INFJs are, INFJs are three, uh, type three. It happens even more rarely that INFJs are type seven. Uh, probably almost never happens. And it happens almost never uh, that INFJ, INFJs are type eight. So in the second half of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the six types that INFJs can be in Enneagram. I'm not going to look into the wings because that would take too much time. So, INFJs can be type 1, they can be type 2, they can be type 4, they can be type 5, they can be type 6, and they can, they can be type 9. So, what are the differences between these types in Enneagram patterns, very, very broadly speaking? Type 1, dominated by a sense of duty and a strong moral system. Type 2, dominated by altruism and being giving with others. Type 4, dominated by a sense of individualism, being artistic and original. Type four, uh, type 5, being dominated by an analytical and rational bent. Type 6, being dominated by self-preservation and, and security. And I just want to add that I'm not certain that type 6 is the one that I mastered the most, so if you guys know it better, please correct me. Type 9, dominated by a, 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 a sense of, 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 of peace, mediation and peaceability, or peaceableness and going with the flow, okay? A state of equanimity, of tranquility. So that's like a lot of different types, right? And, and what I described are differences in Enneagram preferences between people. Now, when applied to INFJ, what you get is, again, broadly speaking, but this is only to give you a peek into the wealth of detail that you could add to the differentiation between different kinds of INFJ, right? The first type, INFJ1, they're going to be INFJs who in reality will be INFJ-ish, but they will come across as a little, on average, on average, a little more serious, a little more stern, a, a, a little bit morally rigid. They're not going to be the most effie dominated of INFJs, if you like, oftentimes. Or rather, their effie, if it is dominant, because it can be quite dominant, instead of being like expressed primarily in terms of the social fluidity and connection of the INFJ is going to be expressed more in terms of the imposition of the uh, the system of values. So let me correct myself. FE, often FE, uh, FE, strong FE, but one incarnation rather than the social one as such. For the number two, for the INFJ two, it's kind of the opposite. The, the giving, socially connected, socially fluid, socially fluent side of the INFJ is going to be where it comes across the most. Oftentimes, INFJ 2s are the ones to have the strongest FE to the extent that sometimes they can almost be confused with ENFJs who often are also Enneagram 2. INFJ 4, your boy here is one of them, <laughs> although sometimes I wonder if I might not be a 5, I think I'm a 4. INFJ 4, they tend to be the ones that are a little bit less strong on FE. Um, they tend to be very NI driven, NI driven, their sense of individuality, their sense of being different. I, uh, type fours are often types that identify themselves by the idea that they are quite unique or different people than others. So, you know, INFJs often feel misunderstood. They feel like they're not quite like the rest of the uh, other species, or, I mean, the rest of the species of humankind. And oftentimes, an INFJ, uh, an INFJ four finds identity in that differentia differentiation. So it it can seem like it conflicts with FE, but in fact, FE is only a manner in which we relate to others and the world. So it can, you know, dwell in the same place as this NI driven sense of individuality. Often, the type four is associated with an INFPs and and strong FI. But I think an INFJ4 is not going to be like an INFP, but is going to 
draw a sense of individuality that's very strong via NI, whereas the INFP would do it via FI. An INFJ5 is going to be the most INTP looking of all INFJs because they're going to be using FE, but it's not going to be what comes across the most necessarily. They're going to be strong on NI and strong on, on TI, and therefore they will have, you know, they will keep the sort of like friendliness and grace that a lot of INFJs have, but with an analytical bent that will be quite uh, apparent quite quickly. Um, INFJ6 remains a bit of a mystery to me. I get the sense that like they're they're good on FE, but um, it's hard for me to exactly tell where they stand because the 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 the, the six type six is is a head type, so I'm assuming that they can also be quite cerebral, um, but uh, and driven by the sense of like seeking security and comfort like comfort and belonging in some kind of external network, but. Um, Again, maybe you guys can give me a better sense of what the INFJ6 is like because I, I don't, not many INFJ6 are, are among my friends, right? So if, if I knew, or none actually, so if I knew an INFJ6 that were one of my friends, I probably had, would have had a better insight, but I don't. So, uh, but I would imagine that they are a little bit, if, if, if they are, because what's interesting is that INFJ6s, they're usually with a, a, a five wing, not a, a seven wing. So. They're, kind of, they're probably going to be a little five-ish, so they'll, they'll have the analytical bends, but they probably will be a little bit stronger on FE. And finally, the INFJ9, which in, in some ways to me, in some ways, uh, fits one of the sort of, one of the quintessential uh, archetypes of the INFJ, which is the psychic, very meditative, very mediatory, very calm and going with the flow in a flow state type of INFJ in a conversation will not be the most extroverted. I think the most extroverted of, of those who have, have I've described are probably going to be the, I mean, it will depend on the wing as well, but probably the two and maybe a bit of the one as well, but mostly the two, mostly the two. Um, now, the nine is not going to be the most extroverted because it all often come across as if it's there in conversation, but it sort of lets people come to them and it, it reacts, but always maintaining, like keeping the harmony, very harmony focused, medita meditative, uh, psychic looking INFJs that uh, if you don't know them well, might almost come across as INFPs as well, uh, because they're strong on FE, but the real, the, I mean, from my experience, the, the dwelling space of an INFJ9 is often NI as well, which is by definition, the, 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 the function of the flow you know, the drifting, the flow, the floating. And a, a nine is often going to come across in that way. Uh, so if you are interested, my type is four with a five wing, which means that I am individualistic in a non-pejorative sense, but I am also, and I'm, 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 I have a strong, strong sense of self that matters a lot to me, but I'm also uh, quite analytical, as you might have noticed. And I'm, I'm, I'm an anti-driven INFJ, that's for sure, but I'm also strong on TI. And in fact, until not long ago, it was FE that I had to develop, and I think that I've made some progress in developing it in the last year or so. So that was to give you an idea of um, how Enneagram can be useful to distinguish between different types of INFJ. Let me know in the comments if you find that useful, and uh, yeah, can't wait to have a conversation. Guys, let me all know what your Enneagram is, okay? So that we can, yeah, we can have a little conversation about how we are amazing people, whether INFJ or not, who also have a lot of differences. All right, have a nice day, guys. Take care.